Shalom. Happy New Year. We are one nation, one people, under one God, indivisible, one love. He is our beloved, the blessed, and the adored. Something magnificent and wonderful and awesome has happened. The spectacular aspect of it is mind-blowing, still blowing my mind. The seventh trumpet of the apocalypse sounded first. The first is last, the last is first. And guess what? All nations have become the Lord's. So we are now one nation under God. And never, ever let this light go out. It's time to celebrate. Let the jubilee of jubilees begin. New hope has come. There is one place in the word of God that says, In the latter days, this shall be considered. This is what I'm talking about. And Jeremiah 30, 24, look it up. It says, I shall return my terrifying anger and stop the fast-rising great tribulation in these days of the trial of all flesh, COVID, that's come to bring God's word of patience and keep us from the hour of the temptation not to change. So love from love, hope from hope, and peace from peace. Uh, faith from faith and mercy from mercy for our living Lord God is all of that and more. And it's time that at the table of love comes a new candle of hope and it will evermore burn ever so brightly. These are the days when people of Elijah will see that all of mankind has been under the gross darkness of all wanting unconditional love, but nobody's willing to give it. All these religions in front of me from Taoism and the Eastern Confucianism, Buddhism, and Buddha, he was a Bible prophet. He foretold Christ, the scars on his nails, uh, feet, um, rather his uh, palms, his side, and his uh, forehead. Every single one of them. Watch the video Aaron Messer me on YouTube. Uh, his video is called The uh, Buddha Prophesies the Holy One. Bible prophecy cannot even be addressed unless people understand the word of hope, the word of truth, that the first are last and the last are first. So welcome. It's time for One Nation under God, and I give you the song that will lead my way in so far as bringing peace to this world if they will accept it and uh, enjoy it. It's by Devin Scott Dicker. I'm going to show you this guy. The good looking brother. Here, let's put him right over here. There we go. And his song has been ostracized because there's a line in it that all religions have not been wrong, that all religions are right. And I'm telling you, all religions have been right in many ways. Everyone has truth. One nation are we. One God. With liberty. In him, in love. But this is for the world. We are one nation. Our hearts, let them remain strong in love. We're religion. None are wrong if they're walking in love. Boost this guy's sails out the roof. This is not just for America. This is for the world, for patriotism of love for those who would walk in the faith of the mercy of unconditional love and choose the path of kingdom, age, freedom that is uh, here. Let the, let the captives be set free and let slavery of all forms end on earth. Let prison systems shut down in favor of penal colonies 
We have the technology. We don't have to have cruel and unusual punishment anymore. So welcome to this new age arising. Jesus said that unless these days were cut short by his word, only thing that could cut time short is his word. Matthew 24, 22, that no flesh could be saved. So we have to stand in love and then none of us are wrong. The glory ahead is blows my mind. And the star and stripes will wave all over the lands. For Jesus is the star of stars, the word of God. He say Yeshua, who arises as the good shepherd over all the flocks of man. One nation, one world. Praise the Lord. I believe. Imagine like a... Uh, it is written. And now I'm going to do something different a little bit. Welcome to this program. I'm going to handle this New Year's Eve special uh, in such a way that all people of the world will come to understand one thing's for sure. New hope is arising. These are the days of Elijah, the days of Shiloh, the days of Joshua, of Zechariah 3, all the same guy, water, steam, and ice. And in these days, new hope has come forth because the spirit of man made in the image of God is like a drop of water that has identi identical qualities to the ocean from wh whence it came. For it is a part of the ocean, and the ocean is part of it. Thus, the difference between the two is not equality, but quantity. Therefore, the soul of all people is nothing more than a little piece of our Father of love above, fighting its way back unto the source from whence it came. Trey Smith said that. Hey, Trey. I love his uh, stuff. But these are the days of new understandings, for in these days of uh, Chrislam. Chrislam is the new name of Israel. God has given according to Isaiah 62 too, because they have inherited all mankind because the trump has sounded first the seventh because the first is last and the last is first. And now they are Chrislam because they have inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54 3. And uh, that means they have inherited the uh, all the uh, Everybody, <laughs> we are one, and God is reuniting us, just what he prayed for in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he is rising now as the good shepherd over all the flocks of man. John 10, as the son of righteousness arises with hope and uh, love for all. So these are the days that we must ring the bell, because these are the days of Elijah, the days when heaven's floodgate is opening as God begins pouring out his love upon all flesh. For all who love are born of God and know God because God is love. Most people are good and most people keep their love light on, but some commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit and then they perish in the everlasting fires of hatefulnesses uh, perishing. And so praise the Lord that if we remain as little children, uh, we might go two steps forward, one step back, but we're going always in the right direction. Thus saith the Lord God, he says unto all people, to all tribes, to all nations, that the everlasting gospel of which I am the writer, Daniel, of la the latter day one of Daniel 12, 13, who would arise to embrace his destiny as the bringer of the vision of God. For these are days of Elijah moving the spirit. And by the way, the, the actual first original uh, Elijah is still yet to come according to Revelation 11. I am the strong and mighty one, the, the, the writer of uh, Zechariah 3 that would bring the flying scroll, the writer of the everlasting gospel, Revelation 14. Line by line, precept by precept, as a destroying storm would it come forth because I have the, the, um, 
word of God of uh, the appointment of Jeremiah in my mouth. Jeremiah 110, Haggai 2.2. 2. These are the days when God is tearing down all the distortional uh, things of all mankind. The word of God was only looking through a glass darkly. But these are the days when of Daniel 12. And these are the days of Daniel 12. His word was only closed until the time of the end, Daniel 12.9. And now it opens anew. And because it opens anew, uh, praise God that the, the shattering of the power of the holy people will come because God is speaking to all of us, each and every person, and it is a rock-solid guarantee. Heaven has now been raining down his love because there, it is his unconditional love. People of fear, listen. People of doubt, hear me now. Let all the world from the, the, the farthest corners all over the circle of earth know that Yeshua HaMashiach is the Lord God, Emmanuel, or God with us in the flesh, returning. Those who love are born of God and know God because he is love, saith the Lord God, 1 John 4, 7. So all those of Taoism, Confucianism, and all the wisdom of the East with the lily will shine brightly. Those of Catholicism shall shine as the stars, and so shall Islam under the crescent moon. There is hope for all. Uh, for the cross goes before us, and he was slain before the foundation of the earth. And the Buddhists and the Hindus are one. And praise God, these are the days for new understandings. And now such holy flames of mankind's great divine hope has always burned for peace. Now shall we have peace because in these days we have nothing but desolate heritages according to the word of God. We have been fighting for 2,000 years. The man that wrote the Satan Bible, Anton LaVey, says all the deaths from most of the wars have all been started by the faiths of love. And he is absolutely correct. Uh, it's the Buddhists against the Hindus. It's the, the Christians against the Muslims. It's these against those. These are the days for the oneness of Christ that he predicted would happen in the latter days, that we would all arise in love because those who love are born of him and know him because he is love. That means that it's never been to believe. Listen to me, people. Jesus Christ, if you believe him to be Lord, he was not one whose eyes were red and dull of wine, uh, as uh, Genesis 49, uh, 12 described the Shiloh who would hold all authority. It is I, I am the alcoholic of Habakkuk too. The vision was written plainly for the uh, time at the end, and it would not lie. God said, you wait for it. It will come. Behold, he whose soul is not upright, but the just shall live by his faith, even though he is transgressed by wine, because he shall be as hell and shall never, never, never uh, stop. He shall be as greedy thereof as hell, fire, and as he embraces all people of the earth unto his risen good shepherd over all the flocks of man, who is Emmanuel, our returning God with us. These are the days of the revelation. Who is the... Uh, the uh, false prophet, Dr. David Awar, calling down fire from heaven, Revelation 11. You can plainly see it uh, in re uh, on YouTube. Who is the uh, lawless one who would die by a sword in Revelation 13? It is a sword swallower. Well, Morgue is his name, and the 666 is on his wall. These are the days of the obsolescence, obsolete nature of all religion upon planet Earth. These are the days of Hebrews 8, for Paul wrote that when those words come, I will be your God, you will be my people, I will forgive your iniquity, I will never remember. Satan has been removed for 1,000 years because he was the accuser of the brethren, day and night accusing us. But praise God, he cannot accuse us anymore. If Michael the archangel, uh, Daniel 12, 1, had not stood up and hogtied that guy and threw him in hell for a thousand years, then uh, he would have made God into a liar because according to Job, he's always been uh, uh, the accuser of the brethren, day and night accusing us, telling God all about our sin. Well, God says, no more. It's time that the people of love love. It's time to let our love overflow and to choose the way of unconditional love as the Father is now revealing that his love has always been. So no more can... Uh, uh, that the flame of passion be, be, be hid. These are the days when the Lord is called me to come forth as one who would feed the master's household meat while the master has a way. As he said in, that, in uh, I, Matthew uh, 
24, he asked Riddle, and he already said it would be Elijah who restores all things. Listen now t carefully. There are two Elijahs. The Elijah of uh, Zechariah 3, 4, and 5, the alcoholic of Zechariah 3, one candlestick. And then there are two witnesses of Revelation 11, two candlesticks, a whole different vision. Elijah is to come, but I am the latter-day Daniel who has the Elijah task of being the Lord's writer. The writer that line by line would there be a destroy, destroying storm of truth. God wants to tear down all kingdoms of man's imagination, not built solely upon his unconditional love. So these are the days when uh, it turns out that uh, our flaming passion must be burning. The refiner's fire of love has come. So praise the Lord, and it's time that all the commonalities of faith must be embraced. Uh, love must become the only driving force on earth. And praise God, it is written that in the latter days, this shall be considered in the latter days, God saying, I shall return my terrifying anger and stop the fast-rising great tribulation if you people will give me the desire of my heart that I prayed for in Gethsemane. One world, one people of love. And so praise God that the Lord is not done with us. And I know you're going to love this uh, this program. And it's this is going to be part one or maybe part two. I'll see how it uh, goes. It came to pass that God's fire of love came sweeping over my heart and the Lord came forth with his uh, oil of gladness for all people to pour out his love upon all flesh upon the the people of Confucianism and Taoism and Islam and Sikhism and the Mormonism and uh, Hyperionism and Christianity Protestant Catholic uh, Buddhist Hindu equally because God has never been a respecter of men. He has always loved all of us equally, for we are angels in the flesh. We are angels, saith the Lord God. Jesus said in John 10 that we are, uh, we are uh, gods. And I'm telling you truly, the first is last, the last is first. We were fearfully and wonderfully made higher than the angels, saith the Lord God. That is why the glory of the latter house is greater than that of the former. And all of creation has been groaning with great ex expectation for the revelation of who is the sons of God, because it is written that we will be as the angels. That is why, and that is why we sexless, neither male nor female. And that is why it is given to us to judge the ones that went before us to fall and because we are just an, another variety of uh, angel there are cherubim and ophanon and messenger angels and there are uh there's there's archangels and the, the uh what else the cherubim and uh the watchers and <laughs> guardian angels the list goes on you look at the how many varieties of fish that he has, and you don't think he wanted a different variety of uh, angel? We are angels in the flesh, whether we believe it or not. And oh, in these days of the kingdom age being born, with the Son of Love arising with healing in his wings, that the Lord's ins most inspiring fire of love has been sweeping now over my heart as an exploding heart of passion to share my fervency so that nobody has to be lukewarm to stir up that which is in us unto overflowing so that Christ can save this earth and snatch it back from the edge of oblivion of Malachi 4, 6, uh, Deuteronomy 18, 18, Matthew 24, 22, Isaiah 24, and Zephaniah 1, 1. No fish will be left on earth, Zephaniah 1, 1. No man, no birds, total ob total destruction. But praise God, prophecy was not written to tell the future, but to change it as Joshua, as Jonah 3 proves, because God did not destroy Nineveh. He relented, and so also, therefore, now is he saying again, I will return my terrifying anger if you will arise in love with unconditional love for one another. For if you cannot love a God who uh, uh, you can't see, you can't love a God you can't see if you cannot love the people around you. So it's time that uh, I reassign the desolate heritages of Isaiah 49 
8, because I am the one of Isaiah 49, 4, the messenger unto Israel, that they have inherited all mankind. And that is why they are Chrislam, Isaiah 54, 3. It predicted that they would inherit all the Gentiles, everybody not of them. And there's never been any difference between anyone. God said, though, of us at the Babylon, he said, if we stand together, praise God, there is absolutely nothing that we can be kept from. And these are the days when a, a kiss was blown unto me as just the messenger of love from our almighty Lord because it is the message, his message, that was written uh, for the latter days, Jeremiah 34, so that God would not be a liar in these latter days. God is now the Lord God of all families of Israel, from the least to the greatest, and all of us have known him, every single one of us. I don't care if we become an atheist, we can let our love light go out, commit uh, the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, letting our love light go out, but if we're, even if we're going two steps forward, one step back, we're going in the right direction. As long as we keep that light of love on, share the love. Don't hide the light under a bushel uh, barrel. And it's time that we realize we got to get out of the land of the walking dead if we let our love wax and cold because of bitterness and unforgiveness. It is obsolete to forgive 70 times 7 and 70 times 70 anyone. It is time to forgive them seven billion, seven trillion, hundred and seven, hundred and seven, seven hundred and seventy seven, seven hundred and thousand million to the tenth degree. That's how much we need to forgive people. It's easier said than done. You don't have to like people, but you gotta love them. If you if you like a flower, you just pluck it. But if you love the flower, you're gonna water it and care for it and love it. So these are the days when the Lord sent a kiss unto all humanity through this messenger to pour out his spirit of love upon all flesh, all of those people walking in the spirit of love, because born again has never been to believe in anything. It's always been of love for those who love are born of God and know him, because God is love, First John 4, 7. And that is foretold as John the Beloved's word that must go again to all people, to all tribe, to all nation. Not my word, his word. It says so in the word of God. So praise God that from the white uh, mercy seat, the great white mercy seat on high, uh, the most radiant light of the Lord's greatest loving forgiveness is now overflowing over all the circle of earth upon all those who can receive the great ocean of his love. For as he pours out his living waters, the, 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 the wind is full and the tide is with us. The wind of his blessings will bring us new hopes. And the blessings that he will bring us is the unity of all people of love. And then will come the fulfillment of the, the kingdom age. And there will be a chicken in every pot, a vine over every people. There won't be people in darkness. Captives can come free. There will be new penal colonies all over the earth. And there will be no homelessness. There will be no more hunger. And all of this shall change if people stand under the flag of love because love is the answer to all of our problems and uh, all of our religion is a bunch of potato potato uh, people arguing uh, over what end of the egg to open up like the Lilliputians from Gulliver's Travel. It's time to uh, uh, transcend all of this because God's love has the, the, it was foretold that the kingdom age would come so that the wise could shine as the stars. And uh, so these are the days when mankind must, in retrospect, look back unto uh, Christ and see that he was assigned different things that he was not. Uh, in Isaiah 49, 4, written of me, it says that I would come to realize that everything I've done has been in vain. I've got 1,800 uh, videos at this channel, and I got 12 people subscribed. The, the world doesn't want to listen to me. But you know what? Ma, uh, Gandhi said this. At first, they're going to ignore you. Then they're going to mock you. And then you win. <laughs> and that's what's going to happen here. The world will be saved by God's word. Open anew, bringing forth new understandings of his love as all distortionality is erased. That's why Paul and Muhammad said the same exact thing. 
Paul said that it would all be obsolete when the Kingdom Age covenant was given to Israel. And uh, Muhammad said, the day is coming when there will be no more left of the Quran except its outward form. And my people will belong to another that sounds like Islam. This is Chrislam, Isaiah 62, two, Israel's new um, covenant name once they've got their covenant. And by the way, the Mormons are the most correct about the covenant. Uh, in Malachi 4, 6, the hearts of the father turning to the children, children to the father. Uh, Moroni the angel came forth unto their uh, their prophet, and he told them that the way that it's going to happen is through God's covenant. So the Mormons, um, so lift up uh, uh, Donnie and Marie Osmond. <laughs> They've been following after a bright light, and so have all of them. Buddha so, preached unconditional love. The Vedas have a prophecy that predicted Christ's atonement would win out in this world. And by prophecy, these other religions, we're all still one, but we got to quit arguing about love. It is the most stupid insanity that there has ever been. So you got to let the flame of love burn brightly. So these are the days of Elijah, the days to point to the golden age to come uh, that will come forth uh, as our very best imagined dreams, if only we can dare to imagine like John Lennon. Imagine a world where nothing really matters anymore except just being people of love. And that is what it's going to end up being. And as people are released from the bondage of their darkness, so shall it be that the light of the dawning of the kingdom age fullness will take many people by surprise who have been ignoring this. Know that there is no darkness darker than ignorance of love alone, saith this preacher, this messenger of the Lord. And know that it is foretold that everything I would do it would be in vain. Isaiah 49, 4. That was never Jesus. Neither was he Shiloh, whose eyes were red and dull of wine. He made water in the wine, uh, but uh, that was it. He wasn't the drinker. So the bottom line, people, he was never the messenger of his own covenant. He never said uh, the message of Malachi uh, 3, 1, ever once in his lifetime. Because he knew in Gethsemane that when he was praying for our oneness, he knew that he would send it by a, a ironclad covenant that was totally unbreakable, that would be over all of mankind, no matter what happens. And then would come the shattering of the power of the holy people, Daniel 12, uh, uh, 7, because God's word was only closed till the time of the end, Daniel 12, 9. And I am the latter day Daniel. So here now that as the Lord ministered unto me, to give his very best bet blessings of his overflowing fountain of, of, of the sapphire sea from above. For he is arising in this hour uh, on the great white cloud. Within a moment of a moment, you can arise and join with him on that cloud, people, if you will dare to believe his word, that his love has always had our back. And these are the days when the, to the, the wise will see that the Lord really does love everyone equally and he always has because every single little boy or in every single little girl ever born have all been his children and he's loved each of us as if we were the only one he would leave the 99 for the one and since um since the lord has called me into uh, his work he gave me uh open-eyed visions. He sent a prophet to me when I was 30 years old and said, hey, here you are in the Bible. And uh, only one person that I know of in history, the same thing happened to, that a, a person was actually showing himself in the Bible. It happened to Alexander the Great. Nathan the prophet showed him, here you are, you're the Greek uh, king, and you will be undefeated. Do you know what happened to uh, Alexander? Same thing that will happen to me. I am Elijah. And people have ignored me, and it is written that I would be ignored by Israel too, as the messenger unto Israel that they have inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3. And uh, it, it's written, but the rest of the world will come to realize that I'm right about everything that I've, I've been preaching. And it says so in Isaiah 41, and it further, because this has been preached since the beginning, the vision of God coming forth through one whose eyes is red and dull of wine, the 
alcoholic of Habakkuk 2, the writer, written plainly on the tablet so all those who readeth it may run. One like Moses, Deuteronomy 18:18, 18, 18, a covenant giver for the kingdom age and a writer of the kingdom age uh, uh, creation uh, gospel of the everlasting gospel of Revelation 14. It is recorded. It is published. And Jesus in Revelation 14 was to put his uh, sword uh, into the uh, world, his sickle to transform the world. And now upon the latter day mountain of Isaiah 2 and Micah 4, it is this channel. There's, I've got 4,000 videos in one year. And this is, there's never been another mountain in the world, people. This is it, a mountain of faith. And upon this Latter-day Mountain is a banquet for the Lord's. It's meat on the mountain. Who will come and feed the master's household of meat, Jesus asked in Matthew 24. It's a mountain of meat at this channel. Uh, Isaiah 25, read of the banquet of love. And, but it is written that upon the Latter-day Mountain in Isaiah 2, in Micah 4, that the world, in order to have peace, must beat their distortional uh, understandings of the sword of the Spirit, of the Word of God, into the non-distorted um, sickle of love of Amos 9. Because these days of Elijah are days where, with the kingdom age covenant having been given correctly to Israel and all mankind, as it clearly says, I am the Lord God of all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27. And as it is written that um, the Lord God, uh, is pulling the veil off of us and all of our religiosity can go back to hell from whence it came because he's revealing that his love has been far deeper than anyone has perceived. Uh, ask Anton LaVey, LaVey, the writer of the Satanistic Bible. He uh, watched his video. Um, it's called uh, uh, Anton Lo LaVey's Deathbed Confession. Love came unto him, and he was born again on his deathbed and raised up. And he realized, oh, my God, what did I do? What did I do? He, the same thing happened to him as Charles Darwin. Charles was like, oh, God, what did I do? What did I do? And he recanted fully. And so has uh, Anton. He knows that there's a God now. But uh, for all you Satan worshipers, uh, listen to your uh, former leader. And know that in these days, the Lord is bringing forth compassion for all people to the overwhelming point where he will even joke about it. Uh, and it's a kind of thing that, you know, he gets the last laugh because we are his children. And we just have to realize that we've goofed back big time in this world. And all of our uh, understandings have been distortional, like Muhammad said. But he said, and all the distortions will be cleared when the book comes proving God's mercy. That's why there would be no more left of the Quran, and his people would belong to another that sounds like Islam. Said the same exact thing as Hebrews 8. But understand that the most wasted day in any of our lives is the awful day in which we had not laughed. And we need to not take things so seriously. But you must take seriously this faith of love that is come forth for the latter days 